until recently, climate change has been mostly an expert discourse. It's been about scientists or politicians, somewhat aloof, somewhat elitist, saying, this is what's going on, this is what we have to do. And, we, and it hasn't really worked. It's been relatively stuck for a long time. So the challenge now is how do we get more voices, different modalities, different ways of speaking and acting, different feelings actually, different emotions. And that's what we're hoping to give voice to tonight. Our world is slowly crumbling and we're doing nothing about it. We need to change our feelings, no matter how deep down they might be, into actions. Because that's what's going to make a difference. And that's why we're all here today, to make a difference. And if we all go off and do our own thing, I guarantee nothing will be done. We need to unite as one gigantic community instead of putting in a half-hearted approach. And after all, we are the people of tomorrow. And if we don't do anything today, soon there will be no tomorrow. Humanity has come a long way since the creation of our planet, but it has gotten to the point where our behaviour is having a serious negative impact on our chances of survival. Many of us are ignorant towards our environment. We are in denial. This denial helps us avoid the problems that will eventually lead to the ruin of our planet. We also tend to discount the future and focus on having everything here and now. It is true to say that people are generally more bothered about the economy than they are with climate change. The current debate about climate change has indicated that although many people believe that globally climate change is happening, only a minority believe it to be a very important problem. This collective apathy means that governments, prioritising re-election, seek to deliver quick solutions that do not involve sustainability. The environment suffers in the short term and humanity still suffers in the long term. Whilst individual behaviour change is incredibly important and will be the vehicle that drives positive change forwards, what is needed is international, innovative, systemic, intellectual change. It is a fact that Apple is now worth more than the entire Russian stock market. If just half of the workforce and money of companies like Apple were put towards solving the biggest issue of our future, well, you can imagine the impact. As a member of NATO, the UK commits to spending at least 2% of GDP on military expenses. If we could agree on spending this amount of money on combating climate change, the results would be astonishing. We are a race committed to and successful because of innovation. Imagine a world where the research capability of our great privately owned IT companies could be used to combat climate change. Who are you? Who am I? Who are any of us? Who we are is a group of people who are on the same page. We are all concerned about the ever-increasing implications of our presence on this planet. Would we be here otherwise? All of us share a desire for change, but if that change is not realised, civilization will perish. But who are we? There's no definition complex enough to justifiably define the human race. We're individuals. We're each so bizarre and wonderful in comparison to one another that it's truly amazing that we've met here today to share this common belief that tomorrow shouldn't be the day the Earth dies a little more. A single individual acting independently won't make a change. A single individual didn't build the pyramids. A single individual didn't one day land himself on the moon, and nor did a single individual write the 130 million books which make up our world's libraries. But we know that it took 25,000 single individuals to build the pyramids of Giza, around 400,000 to land two people on the moon, and easily hundreds of thousands more to create 130 million books. So, you tell me, why can't 7.1 billion single individuals prevent global warming? You tell me. A generation from now, historians and scientists will be trying to contemplate as to why we were far more concerned with issues such as terrorism, capital wealth and global recession than we were of the approaching environmental apocalypse. Everybody recognises the existence of climate change, yet very little tangible action has been initiated to reduce and mitigate its effects. The blame ultimately falls upon us, the most ungrateful, selfish and irresponsible species that this world has ever had the greatest misfortune of ever accommodating. The truth cannot be concealed. The events of not accepting climate change and taking action will be severe. I have family in Bangladesh, most of whom are subsistence farmers. When their crops fail, 
We send the money to keep them going until a new harvest can be made. However, no money I can make or my family can send will stop Bangladesh from being under the sea in 20 years' time. Bangladesh is a delta. It's a low-lying area of land formed when a river deposited material, but the sea never washed it away. It's one of the largest population densities in the world, and 80% of it is low-lying, and most of it is predicted to be under the sea. Now, that's my heritage, my ethnic origins, completely wiped off the face of the planet because we couldn't be bothered to help them. If money was invested to reduce global emissions, this would eventually lead to a deceleration in global sea level rise. This is what we call an investment for the future. Prevention is far more better than cure.